Hello, this is a Grotrin Steinweg, two, two, three centimetres long, seven foot four inches long. Uh, it's come in for assessment, going from A to B, and we offer assessment on the way through, just to see if there's anything there might be to improve the piano. So just looking at the casework, it's in reasonable condition throughout, and I didn't see any, any real flaws on it. Let's have a very quick look around the whole piano. While it's with us, it's obviously an opportunity to get the casework improved. Um, so look at the long side here, yeah, it's very reflective obviously if it's black so it's very difficult to, to see any, any defects but I'm sure there aren't anything, there isn't anything serious. There's such scratching here as you'd expect on the top very often there's scratching um, and the underside here I think is in good condition so it can be tidied up obviously, a bit of scratching here too. And uh, I think where the music's been st stood here, you can often tell how much the piano's been played as to how much scratching there is here. On the desk itself, not too much. And on the other side too. Um, so we can try and make that better. Uh, or we, we can get someone in who is uh, just an expert at polyester and they can make it almost perfect. That does cost a reasonable amount to get them in for a day. But we can do that. Um, we ourselves do polyester, but not so much as French polishing. So this could be shined up, obviously. Um, the cosmetics aren't, I don't think, what concerns the owner that much, but it's something to do while, while it's with us. The keys need buffing. Um, they tend to attract the dirt if they're not shiny, so we shine them up on a buffing wheel and then they won't attract dirt so, so much as they... They're not too dirty now, but they won't attract dirt and uh, that's very helpful. The only part of the casework that can't be made good is this crack here, um, which uh, the polyester repair specialist says it's like glass it can spread and just uh, so it's best to try and do it he can disguise it pretty much 100 percent and uh, but it, you'll still just about see that but apart from that everything else this can be rendered almost scratch free the right hand sustain pedal is often an indication of how much use the piano's had obviously that's the one that's used the most and uh, not too much they're quite high pedals actually eight centimeters from the floor so and the leg room's about 62 i think so um if you're very tall that might be a, an issue um something that we be difficult to do anything about to lower the pedals is just possible but um eight centimeters a bit on the high side but um i didn't think it was too bad when i was playing it so looking at the inside we can See, that's a bit dusty. Now again, that's just cosmetic, but there's no damage to the soundboard, just dust really, and dust on the soundboard. That's something we can clean off. Um, we're regularly doing that on our stock pianos and something we, we used to do. So, otherwise, there's, there's no moth. We always check the felt for moth. That's really, you know, if you can see moth there, it's probably inside the action too, but there's no moth in the, in the action, I'm pleased to say. Uh, the dampers are also very dusty, so that's something we can obviously do. There's the model of the piano, 223, it's a model I particularly like. We've restored these for, uh, for ourselves and for clients before. And uh, there's the serial number. Not normally put serial numbers on the side there. They're, they're usually here, but um, that's where you normally expect to find them. Now underneath the keyboard, it also has a Morley's number. Um, that's uh, when Morley's, Morley's were the distributors of Grotter and Steinbeck. So that would be their, their number. And uh, they've got a good record of numbers. Now the client told us that it tended to be drifting out of tune, so uh, I've checked some of these, I've uh, checked this, this is um, A, so I've just checked these two and, um, and this one, and I've set reset this one a little bit further in. But what tends to happen, I think, uh, over the years is that as, the, as the, the tuning pins are turned a lot, so it's reg very regularly tuned, they tend to form a, a little groove, um, and so if you just tap them on the head, just roughen up the wood a little bit, push it in, that destroys the groove and makes them very tight. Um, it's something we do in concert pianos if they're going slightly loose, so um, it's a very common thing. Whether replacing the pins is necessary, uh, I wouldn't do it if it was a stock piano, certainly. They're very tight once they're set, um, but you could, and they weren't that loose before, but they were slightly slightly on the loose side so with a lot of turning they do tend to get slightly loose if you are a piano tuned or if you regularly have your piano tuned uh, i well we, we tend to pitch raise to about 442 and let it drop gradually down they wouldn't have to turn all the tuning pins each time we tune if you're trying to keep it at a440 all the time the tendency is to just turn them all and that 
forms a groove. And that, that's what we think. And if you've got a comment, if you're a tuner, that'd be very useful to know. So just setting the pins by tapping them slightly. Now you don't tap directly onto them. Use a rest pin setter, which is, has a square here. And you, know, you can't tune with this. It, the metal's not strong enough. It tends to, it, it'll just give if you try and tune with this. But um, if you just hold it tight and then hit it on the head with a, a very light hammer, uh, then that's enough. And it's not, the idea is not to get it right, to get the pin to go in, but to roughen the wood. So you can see it going very, very slightly, and that roughens the wood and makes it very tight. I think also a reason for not changing the tuning pins is that they're actually quite large tuning pins. I don't think this has been restrung at any time, not since 1987. They look like the right colour of strings for that, that age. Um, but they are quite quite on the large side. That one's a little bit smaller, so slightly varied. Um, and if you put bigger pins in, they're going to be maximum size, and you might find problems, especially in the base, with not getting a big enough tuning pins, and then you've got to replace the rest blank. So uh, I wouldn't want to go down that road at all. Just re re resetting them. If any of them are a bit loose, you could replace individual ones, but I don't think that would be necessary. In order to test the tightness of the pins, we just I, I just slightly pitch raised this one here. That was about 439.5. And that's up to there. I did the same with some others just to check them. And I think they all need setting really. So it's a reasonably long job. And so I'd pitch raise slightly, take it up to about 441. I mentioned earlier, 442, we often tune pianos to, which most clients are happy with. And then they'll, then the tuning doesn't need if it, when you come and tune it, you don't need to turn all the tuning pins, so that, that means they're not going to, it's not going to go loose quicker. Um, so you can see the pitch that was at before, that's, that's the G-sharp. I just pitched very slightly. Now listening to the tone of the piano, I did find it, the hammers are a bit on the soft side, so I tried refacing this one here because that was one of the softer ones and now it's not so soft in fact it might need voicing it might be slightly too hard but the idea is to get to reface them and then bring them down afterwards and another one I did here see that's the C sharp and that's the C it's slightly brighter I would think about possibility of changing the hammers we'll think about that in a second Here's a similar aged Hoffman Grant. That one's possibly slightly too bright, but you can hear that it's generally brighter. Back to the Grotrian. Of course, you might want a soft sound, so it's a personal taste, but a normal sound, I would say, would be slightly brighter than this, and certainly maybe as bright as that. Now, looking at the action on the Grotrian, it's in very good condition. The hinges are tight here. Um, there's a bit of lubrication needed on the, the balance rail here. If I lift the keys up, you can, you can uh, see that some of them don't come back down again. But generally, there's not too, mu too many to do. We will do them all. We'll lubricate them all if you'd like us to, to do the work because it will make the touch slightly more even. Um, it's useful to have this rail quite high. By the way, if you take this rail off and put it back on so you can get the keys off, it's always nice to leave it high. The only function of this rail is when the piano's moved and the keys won't, won't fall out. Um, and that's quite important. And Blutners don't have this and uh, sometimes uh, there's problems in removal because of that. So um, it's a useful rail, but it's, leave it high and then it's easy to check. Well, I'd like it left high, and then it's easy to check whether the, whether the balance rail needs lubricating by lifting them up and seeing if any of them stay up. So if you look at the keys, some of them are staying up a little bit. It's not that significant, actually, but we will lubricate anyway. It's a standard job we do, and it tends to improve the touch. And also, lubricating the, the, ro the, ban the rollers here, um, that will help the touch a little bit, help it feel a bit smoother. But new, new actions always have talc on here or or Teflon powder, um, and that really does make it feel smooth and tends to tends to reduce any squeaks if there are any at all. Um, but the action's regulated well. If we look at the spring, if I lift my finger a little bit, the back check releases it, and it's going up nicely. The let-off can be slightly adjusted. But looking at the hammers, they are 
refaced at some stage. You can tell that because they look a bit woolly around the side. It may actually be when the piano is first made. Sometimes it's refaced then. They can't always be sure about that. And I've refaced this one a bit more just to uh, and, and, and smoothed it off just to see how much brighter it got. And it did get a bit brighter. If you look at those two, you can see the grooves. That This one hasn't got the grooves because I've refaced it. Um, I, I, this is just uh, trial refacing. The, the workshop will do uh, very accurate refacing. Um, hopefully, so th th I've just refaced using this, and it, it's a carry it in my toolbox. It's a, it's metal. It's a fi metal file, and then I like to smooth it off with the other side, uh, just to then that's as good as that's as good as refacing. Uh, the, the workshop will use use sandpaper usually, and uh, on each one individually. It's a long job, but that will definitely even up the tone. We can then uh, reface it, even up the tone. Um, it's not something essential to do in terms of the playing of the piano, but the tone of the hammers, I think they could do with improvement. Could change the hammers. They're good quality hammers. If you change them, you, that, that would allow you to go as bright as you wanted to. So it's depending on your taste. You may not want it any brighter, in which case um, we could leave it just as it is and then just voice the odd one or two that need voicing. Looking at the worksheet then, I think I've mentioned everything here. Um, and you can have a quick look if there's anything I might have missed out. It's on here, hopefully, and then the team can, uh, they might also have ideas that things that would improve the piano, but they can have a look at this and that gives them a start. So pitch raising and setting tuning pins, that will certainly make them stable. So if the tuning was drifting out because of the tuning pins being slightly loose, that would, that would definitely solve that problem. Um, and reface and fine voice, I think if it was a stock piano, we'd do that. We'd think about changing the hammers, but obviously that's an expensive job. Buffing the keys, um, and I mentioned about cleaning, well that's obviously just cosmetic, although it does stop the dirt being attracted if you buff the keys. Regulate, um, and uh, especially the damper lift off, I didn't mention that, but uh, there's a need to need to do that, and it's important that dampers aren't lifting high enough. Um, so looking at the weights on the keys, we've got 57 in the base, it's not too bad, 52 would be what we'd aim for, 58. So I think lubricating the rollers will just help slightly um, to, to improve that. There's a bit high here and uh, we could obviously do very exacting touch weight as well. Uh, there's, that's uh, the, the middle C is 53 grams. I just thought I put weights on here so you could see how that was done. You need to put your foot on the right hand pedal when you do it, lift the dampers off and then just check it like this. So if we let go of the weight, it's going down. It needs a little bit of persuasion perhaps. When the rollers are lubricated, uh, then that will go down a little bit more smoothly. So that's a Grotter in Steinweg, two, two, three centimetres long, seven foot four inches, so large domestic or small concert grand piano. And these are in concert venues and they make very good concert pianos. We've worked on several of them in the past. This one's a bit mellow, but that might be what you'd like in a domestic setting. And of course the, the room is important, so you'd want a mellower sound if it's a very small room. But I think refacing and evening up the tone uh, even leave, we could leave it mellow still, but we could just reface and even it up. Uh, but the client said that the piano is tending to drift out of tune, and there were indeed unisons quite badly out. So that one is, that one we've tuned, and that one's out. So it may be that that's because the tuning pins are just beginning to get slightly loose and uh, I'm suggesting that resetting them will be the best answer. Not replacing the tuning pins, uh, they're quite large tuning pins already. Um, if you put larger ones in then some of the base ones are going to be very large and you may even find you've got to start changing the rest plank. So, uh, uh, because if too, there's a maximum size of pin and beyond that you'd have to change the rest planks, put smaller pins in. Very smooth action, easy to play. Needs a little bit of regulation, a bit of lubrication, and that'll make it feel uh, even more smooth. The key to do with buffing. Now, I've mentioned all this before. The, the bass is on Brochins is just very beautiful, and the tone generally all round. So as they're excellent pianos, I really recommend them. And we have bought and sold, restored a few of them. So 
Thank you very much for listening. If you're interested in your piano being assessed as it goes from A to B, we're really happy to do that and, uh, and then recommend work. And if you'd like the work done, then we can do it before it gets to your house.